Today I want to solve a past paper question on gravity from A2 Physics and it's very recent, it was in 2022 and I think that this is a really typical question on gravity it's usually the first ever question and they usually ask you the same things so they would ask you to state the Newton's law of gravitation and then they would also tell you to do this mathematical proof and stuff like that and generally these questions are really similar and they appear a lot in past papers so I think it's worth Worth taking a look at what the ideal answers are and almost memorizing how to solve various parts of this problem to make it easier when you actually get to the exam. So we can start with the first part of this which is really like a super common question. It's, it's really beneficial to memorize this state Newton's law of gravitation and we can do that very easily. So the Newton's law of gravitation states that the attractive gravitational forces between two masses is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. Now this sounds like a really lengthy answer, but in reality you don't actually have to memorize that much. A lot of it is just contingent on common sense. You need to memorize the one law of gravitation F is GMM over R squared. So once you know this, you can basically answer this question. The keyword that you need here is attractive gravitational force. And of course it's attractive, it's gravity you can't repel, and it's worth just telling the word gravitational force. Um, if you know this equation, you know that there are two masses, and you know that these two masses are basically going to be proportional to the force and also the masses are going to be multiplied together so it's going to be the product of their masses so it's the force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses but this force is inversely proportional to the square of their separation and all you need to do is just write out the formula and then create the line from there. So now we can move on to the second part of this question, and it tells us to use Newton's law of gravitation to show that the gravitational field strength g at a distance r away from point mass m is given by that. And for this, we don't have to change that much. We just need to state what I just stated, which is the equation of the force, the gravitational attractive force between two masses, capital M and small letter m. So we state this first, and I think this is pretty much common sense because they look really similar, so you should think there's something going on here. Now, the definition of gravitational field strength is the force exerted on a unit mass. So basically, the G on our Earth is going to be 9.81 newtons per kg. So we know that this is whatever force is exerted per unit mass. So we can write down the equation here that G is force over mass. And this is a small letter mass because you know that G is acting on smaller objects around the Earth by the big object, which is the Earth. So this is going to be the small letter, not the big letter. So then we go to substituting this into each other. We know that F over M which is G, as we know, is going to be GMM over R squared and times 1 over M. So G equals to this over M. And we can obviously cut these two out and we know that G equals to GM over R squared. And that's shown. And where would you get the marks that you need for this question? you would basically get one mark for this equation, and you would also get one mark for this equation. So now it's asking us to apply that which we had just derived, and it tells us that the Earth has a mass of 5.98 to the power of 10 to the 24 kilograms, and a radius of this much. The Moon has a mass and a radius, and the Earth and the Moon can both be considered as point masses at their centers, and their distances are a distance of this much apart. So we just have to think of them as points, which makes it really easy for us. And we have to show that the gravitational field strength at the surface of the moon, due to the mass of the moon, is 1.62 newtons per kg. So we're trying to find the g of the moon, um, which basically 
don't get too scared by all of the words here. Essentially, they just want us to substitute stuff into the equation that we just derived before. So we can get around to doing that. We have g is gm over r squared. And we know that the distance is this much. We know that the mass of the moon is going to be what's given over here. And why do we need to talk about the moon? Because we need the mass of whatever is causing the gravitational field, and we're talking about the surface of the moon. So the moon is creating the gravitational field, so we're selecting the mass of the moon. And then we finally have g, which you can get from the front part of the past paper where they give you all the units. So if you substitute all this in, you would guess... And this is... Actually, if you work out all the math, it's... 1.619 newtons per kilogram, which is the unit for G. And then I'm going to say this is approximately 1.62 newtons per kg. And I'm going to write shown to show that my working is done. So now we can continue going and we can say that there is another question here. Explain why there is a point X on the line between the centers of the Earth and the Moon, where the resultant gravitational field strength due to the Earth and the Moon is zero. So here, I would suggest thinking about it in terms of photo. And so we have the Earth over here, and then we have the Moon, which is smaller. And there's a certain point between on this line where, because the Moon is going to pull you towards this side, and the Earth is going to pull you towards this side, there's a certain point where their forces balance out and there is zero force on you. So they're telling us why does that happen? Well, we know that gravitational forces are always attractive. So the moon and the earth are basically exerting forces that act in opposite directions to each other. And at point X, they would cancel out because they are of equal magnitude. So I could go ahead and write that down. So this is basically the answer. We see that two marks are given for this question, and you would get a mark for saying equal magnitude and in opposite directions. So gravitational attractive forces of the Earth and Moon at point X cancels out because they are of equal magnitude and act in opposite directions at point X. And I would probably take away the S here because we have plural subject. So we're almost at the end of our very typical question, and this question, which is the end game kind of, has three marks. And this too is really simple. It just tells us to calculate the distance of x, of point x, so the pl place where it cancels out from the center of the moon. So we have just written down that it has to be equal and opposite, and the keyword here is that it's equal in magnitude. So we can use math to calculate this. We know that the... Um, the force is given by F is GMM over R2, but we don't need to care this much. We only need the gravitational field strength to cancel out. So we can just use this much simpler equation to um, calculate it. So this means that the gravitational field strengths are going to be equal in magnitude, which means at point X, the gravitational point field strength of E which is Earth, has to equal the gravitational field strength of the moon. And so we can write at point x. And we can probably erase all of this to get it off. And then now we can start with the substitution. So we know that, um, and it's def definitely worth it to write GME over R squared. Um, and let's talk about this R a little bit later, is GM moon and over r squared. So these r's are not the same. We have to think about what this is. So we have the earth here, and then we have the moon. And there is a certain point x, it is probably somewhere like here. And we want the, the distance of point x from the center of the moon. So basically, this is going to be x. So this means that the radius or the distance between the moon and x is denoted by x. What about the distance between the earth and x? 
Well, we know what is the distance between the Earth and the Moon. We've had that in our data just before in the last question. So this would be whatever their distance is, and let's denote that by r minus x. So we can raise these, and we can do this is going to be x squared, and this is going to be r minus x, and then we can square the whole thing. If you checked my previous questions, you would know that the distance between the Earth and the Moon is given by 3.84 times 10 to the power of 8. So that's what would go in R. It would be 3.84 times 10 to the power of 8. And now we can just do some substitution, and that's literally how it ends. So it's a lot of substitution, and I'll start doing that right now. So eventually, if you kind of take off the g because it cancels out, and then you multiply this to this side, you take this to this side, we get this equation here. And if you solve all of this open, you actually get a quadratic equation, and that would be So this is the quadratic equation that you get. And if you put this in your calculator, just type it in there, then you get an answer. It's super easy to find. If your calculator doesn't have that function by any chance, make sure to use the equation for that. That equation. Make sure to use this if you don't have the calculator. But this is why you really should get like a modern calculator for A-levels because it just saves you so much time in the exam if you're able to type all this into a calculator. So the, the answers that I get when I typed it into my calculator is this. Or, and I got four, I get two answers because it is a quadratic formula, obviously. And this is rejected because we have a negative sign coming up and we want the distance to be from the moon to the middle. So we don't want a negative sign. And then so we can reject this. And so we accept this and this would be the final answer. So note how I put a lot of decimal points. I put four or five significant figures-ish for my workings to make my answer a lot more accurate and I made sure to write this kind of explanation at first. So at the end of this you should realize that there really is not a lot to gravitational questions that you have to remember. What you need to know by all means is this equation and this is the most important equation in my opinion. And it is the fact that the gravitational attractive force equals to the value g times this. This is really important because this will basically get you the equation of g, so the gravitational field strength. You can literally derive the Newton's law of gravitation from this equation as well. And this is a very important equation to remember because it's actually not given to you at the front of the paper, if you can see here. You can't find that equation um, on the front of the paper, which is a shame. But this is why you should intuitively memorize this equation and be able to use it and pull it out at will. So essentially the star of gravity questions is our very handy equation over here. That was it for my video on how to solve a very typical standard gravity question in A-levels. Uh, thank you for watching.